We've talked about basic exposure settings in the previous video to let you take better control of your camera. Aperture was the most complex one, so in this video we'll explain it in depth. First, let's talk about focusing a lens. By default, your camera's autofocus system controls this, setting focus automatically. That makes sense if you're photographing people, large environments, or anything dynamic, but for our controlled static subject, it might even cause issues. Autofocus can make mistakes and ruin a photo, even in between two shots. Every DSLR can switch from autofocus to full manual focus. This means you're in complete control of focus by twisting the focus ring on your lens. This way, you're sure the focus won't jump between shots. If you read your camera manual, there will probably be settings to help you, such as focus peaking, where a colored effect is drawn over the camera display. This helps see what part of the image is in focus. There might even be a zoom magnifier, where the display shows a small, blown up portion of the current view, helping you achieve pixel perfect focus. Especially this zoom magnifier is crucial to help nail your focus. Using manual focus will help you see and understand better what is happening with your aperture and focus. The downside is you do have to readjust your focus each time your camera or subject moves. It's easy to forget and ruin a photo, so best make it a habit to check. Now, aperture is tricky because it affects focus and sharpness. We don't want parts of our subject to not be in focus, as this causes problems for the photogrammetry process. That means a large aperture, usually between f1.8 and f3.5 for standard lenses, will be a problem. On the other hand, going for the smallest possible aperture, like f32, is also not great. Things get less sharp on this end too, and the amount of light coming in is tiny, easily leading to underlighting issues. And while the depth of field gets wider with smaller apertures, it also scales with focus distance. So that means you'll have more depth of field up close and much less up to complete sharpness further away. That can be problematic for small subjects if you want them to take up most of the photo. So what is the right aperture value? Well, as a rule of thumb, find out what the sharpest aperture range is for your lens and start with this value. This is probably f8 or f11 up to f16. Check if everything is in focus. If not, reduce your aperture step by step until f20 or so. If your object is still not fully in focus, try moving a bit further away from it. Even 10 to 15 centimeters in distance can make a difference for small objects. Also, keep in mind your choice of lens can make a difference. Default kit lenses that come with a camera are usually not the sharpest or highest quality, and it can be worth investing in a higher quality lens. Especially for close-ups, macro lenses can be useful, as they let you focus much closer to the lens. Now there's one special trick that you can do to achieve perfect sharpness when all else fails. Focus bracketing means you take multiple pictures at different focus distances and then combine them in Photoshop. It requires a lot of extra work. With our full loop series, it should only really be used as a last result. Let's go over that. If you have two or more photographs with different focus, load them into different layers. Select all layers and go to Edit, Auto-Align Layers. Hit OK with the default settings. Photoshop will try to do a pixel-perfect alignment of all selected layers. Next, go to Edit, Auto-Blend Layers. Again, choose OK with all default settings. Photoshop will blend the sharpest parts of your layers together. If all went well, you now have a perfectly sharp photograph. It's worth turning at least some of these steps into recorded action to save you some time. So that covers aperture, focus, and sharpness in detail. Next up, we'll look at how to take control of your lighting.